Um, yes, my name is uh, Perry Manuelson, and I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you, Robert. Okay, now. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of SoundCraft, and we actually have six people from SoundCraft here today. So it's Bjorn over here, he's the CTO and also co-founder, and Anton, and our other Bjorn, and Vanya, and Jonas. So Vanya and Jonas are going to help me a little bit during this session as well. So we're going to get practical, as you've seen, probably because we brought some guitars and keyboards and everything, so we're going to do a demo for you. We're also going to talk a little bit about Soundtrap and about technology, Google technology that I've been using uh, to, to enable this. Uh, and we will have a question and answer after the session as well. And we have some very <coughs> heavyweight programmers here as well. So if you have technical questions, you can probably patch them after the meeting as well. All right. So um, how many of you are kind of musicians or played an instrument at some point or did the singing? Yeah, a lot of people, yes. It's almost like, uh, I think uh, there were some uh, study in the US saying that every half, half of all the households in the US have a practicing musician. You know? So there's so many people playing. Oh. Um, the problem that we see, so we are, we have a background as both uh, uh, okay. We have a background of both now. musicians and techies ourselves. So, me, myself, I'm a programmer since I was a kid. I was kind of eating keyboards, as Bjorn usually says, so took your line there. Uh, <coughs> since I was like 12 or something, you remember Big 64 and you know, all those computers. Yeah, um, but also being a musician. So, I was always kind of standing on two legs. Should I be a musician or should I go the programming route? And, uh, most of the, the persons in the soundtrack team actually have similar experiences. So we are very much into technology and into music. But I've been working then like 17 years as a um, software and IT and business consultant. Um, and then we're running a couple of businesses myself um, prior to soundtrack as well. So what we have seen is this. So the first problem that creates you if you want to if you want to record or, or make any music is this. It's so darn complex. It's like going into a cockpit, right? So already there, you exclude so many people that would like to make music, but they can't, or they're not interested in learning all that technology because they just want to be creative, right? So all those tools, they've been created for a completely different type of target audience. They've been created for professional producers and <laughs> student technicians. They haven't been created for the musicians or the ordinary student in the school. They just would like to do a podcast or a homework. And then they face this, right? So the, the knowledge gap, the, the, the level of, the, of, of knowledge you need to reach to be able to even start your music today is really, really high. So that's our first kind of problem we're trying to tackle. The second problem is that there are usually software, there are installed on an old-fashioned computer, and you have loads of, of other types of third-party libraries and plugins and everything that you need, so you need to have that computer with you. But you're, you're as creative when you're on the bus, or at the friend's place, or in the school facility, or at your parents' <coughs> place. You would like to create and, and continue your creative flow wherever you are. You would like to pick up an, uh, an Android tablet, I should say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, then, uh, and then you continue on the Chromebook. And then you invite another <laughs> friend using uh, a, a, another PC, like, uh, and they all would like to to, uh, to combine that experience and work together. So it should work seamlessly over cross devices. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, you're not alone. Maybe you're very good at playing gu the guitar, but you're not that good at playing the bass or playing drums, or you need a didgeridoo player for your next song. Maybe you're very good at playing hard rock guitar solos, but you're sitting like in the woods of Sweden and you don't have any double pedal drummers nearby, but like 20 of them in LA that would just love to play with you. So those are the kind of the three problems we're trying to tackle with Soundtrap. So complexity, uh, cross device, and collaboration. So what we've done is that we created Soundtrap. So Soundtrap is an easy, easy, easy to use online audio recording studio where you collaborate using any device. 
So it's directly in the browser. You don't have to download anything. Just open up the browser. So it works on Chromebooks, works on Android, works on iOS, works on Windows, works on Linux, whatever uh, OS and whatever <laughs> most of the browsers. Well, uh, at least Safari and, and, uh, and Chrome, of course, it works great on. So you can actually start on that tablet and then you continue on your other device and you invite another friend having a completely different device and you can sit in two completely different places. So you can have a guitarist in New York and a singer in, in Singapore and a, a double pedal drummer in Cape Town and you work in the same product. So it's basically like Google Docs, but for music, <laughs> right? Sounds great, yeah? So that is for Sound Travis. and so just to give you a hint of how it could work. So we've grown very fast. So we've gone from 20,000 users in the beginning of last year to now soon 400,000 users actually, and it's all organically grown. So we don't make any uh, advertising at all. It's our users that love us so much, so they tell their friends, who tell their friends, who tell their friends. Uh, we have, we're always, we're like in 200 countries, but I should say it's like 50 or 60% US and it's even more on the educational side, as well, I just mentioned, too. Uh, we are very easy of actually getting people into SoundCloud, so 35% of all the people that visit SoundCloud for the first time actually sign up. So we have a quite good uh, acquisition of users rate. So if we just uh, direct them to the website, they like it and they join. So what happened was, um, <coughs> When we launched, we actually launched the consumer version in mid-summer uh, 2015. So we launched a very rough beta here in the end of, two, of 2013. And then we added on functionality during 2014. And we had a very good relationship with Google from the very beginning. So we were actually up in your other room, I think, on, this, on the next floor, like in beginning of 2014 because we were, we were the ones that were sending in all the bugs, basically, <laughs> to, uh, to web audio, web media, and, and all those specs. And they were starting to, to uh, I think they were starting talking a little bit about us and saying, who are those kids, actually? So, so we moved floors and you peaked? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, so you invited us over for a technical presentation where we were describing what we were doing and, and how we worked. 
and things that didn't work that well at that point in time. Uh, and then that, con that kind of relationship continued and you invited us over to Google I.O. So we were presenting at Google I.O. 2014 together with uh, some Googlers as well, me and Gerd. Uh, but it was uh, then in the end of 2014 was really starting to pick up pace and then in the beginning of 2015 we were starting to get a lot of traction from schools so there were a lot of ed tech bloggers who were starting writing about this because they also saw exactly those three types of problems we're trying to attack that it's so complex to make music today that it makes it very hard to do it in school because the kids don't have that knowledge that they need. So they were starting to use something because it was so easy. They were starting to use it because it was cross-platform. They could use it on any device. And you know, Chromebooks are growing like crazy in the US in schools, especially. We're going from like a 1% share to 54% share of all the uh, like old devices sold to school uh, in 2015 in the US. So when you come to Chromebooks, you don't have any type of audio recording studio. So SoundCloud naturally became that. And then secondly, the third thing is that since it, you can collaborate, then the teacher can remotely coach the kids. They can do homework sitting at home with different devices. They can actually have like bring your own devices schema so they're sitting on different types of devices than they have in school. And they can do their homework. Or they can take instrument lesson from a guitar teacher in Peru or whatever. Uh, so they loved it for, for many reasons, and then we started using it in the beginning of 2015. And then at that point, actually Google, uh, which we, we weren't an official partner then, but then you were starting to approach and say, we're seeing this happening as well, especially when it comes to the Chromebook revolution, that they're starting using tools like yours uh, for creative releases in school. <laughs> so we would like to be partners, so we Google for education partners since this summer. And also, uh, the American, Association School, the American Association of School Librarians reached out and said, you've been voted as the best website for teaching and learning in 2015. We'll say, that's quite cool, we said. We don't, we don't have an educational version yet, but <laughs> anyway, good that you use it. So then we started actually reaching out to them and asked them, okay, you, obviously you'll love it, but what do you need more? So they said, we need wall gardens, we need what is called COPPA compliance, that's Children Online Privacy Protection Act, so the kids could work in a closed wall garden together and not be being bothered by other people on the internet. We need teacher administration tools and some other kind of integration to Google Classroom and so on. So we added that on after the summer of 2015, and, in the, uh, and then it was really starting to, to, to pick up. So right now I would say we have like half-half, uh, half of our market is uh, half of our users are educational users and the other half is consumer users, but it's, it's growing actually in, in both of the markets. The next web wrote, uh, forget GarageBand, soundtrack is music for everyone when we release. That's also quite a good quote, right? Mm -hmm. um, but of course, even if uh, it's good when news are talking about it and bloggers are talking about it and so on, it's even better to hear from our users. So just to give you some user quotes here before we go into the demo. <laughs> This is brilliant. It replaced Audacity since I got the Chromebook. The easiest music platform I ever used. Absolutely amazing. Actually, the, the three most common words we hear from my users are amazing, I love it, and, and, I, and uh, uh, awesome. Okay, those are the three most common comments we get, actually. I love it. Wake me up. <laughs> Holy crap, this is amazing. <laughs> and every now and then, you actually get a comment where you really feel that this is the reason we are actually building this. I, I was missing for a long time. It's my life and blood now that I can actually record what I feel. Without it, I would be very sad. <laughs> right? Anyway, as we said, we've been building in this mostly on Google technology, and I'll just go through kind of the three major cornerstones, and then maybe after this session we can talk a little bit more if you have specific questions regarding that. So we have been developing this completely in the browser. It's not just working on Android, of course, but uh, or sorry, on, on in the Chrome browser, but it, it works on the browsers that have implemented web audio, web media, and web RTC. Um, and as you know, Google has been running in the forefront for, for those standards standards for a long time. So the web audio stuff we use to actually process all the audio, which I'll show you soon. The web media we use to actually get input from things like this into the tool. 
And the WebRTC is used for the online collaborative features, the video chatting, which I'm going to show you as well. So all those technologies are used in Snapchat. Uh, secondly, we have developed everything in Dart, which is Google's new language. Uh, so that's also one of the topics that we talked about in the Google I.O. talk that you can look at from last, last summer, 2014. Um, so then uh, Dart was quite new. So we, uh, it was actually Gurn that picked that language as the, uh, in, in its very, it wasn't even ready yet, I, I think. No, I think it was pre-1.0. Yeah, so. yeah. So it's a great language because it's cross-platform in the sense that it compiles to JavaScript, so we can write it in Dart, and then it compiles to JavaScript and runs on all devices. That supports JavaScript, of course. But uh, unlike JavaScript, it's much more scalable. So you have like the common structure that you need in a, in, a, in, a, in like a more mature language, like packages and all those types of structure you're used to. So you can actually scale your code base much easier. And thirdly, it's more than, so it includes stuff like streams, you can do asynchronous programming, you can do like futures and all that, which is extremely helpful if you do stuff like we do, which are quite complex things directly in the client. So Dart has really been an enabler for us. Um, and thirdly, we run everything on Google Cloud. So everything is, is run on, on Google Cloud servers and the computing engine. So those are kind of three building blocks. but. Then, of course, we're using a lot of other technologies as well, and I will come to the more specific education one as well, but we're using some native uh, interface uh, in, in Chrome, and we're using, um, you know, of course, it runs very well on Chromebooks, of course. Right, um, so demo time, enough with te boring technical stuff, right? So let's show you how Soundcraft works. So when you go into Soundtrap, you open the studio up, it looks like this. So it's not a cockpit, it's a quite slick interface. Uh, you have a profile as well that you can go to and you can find people to play with and so on and so on. But we're focusing on the actual studio here. So I can just select the template here, but let's say we start with a blank page. Uh, usually a lot of people, they start using the loops in Soundtrap and that's we have like 2,700 loops that works directly on the fly. And they actually adjust themselves in key and tempo. So if I pick a loop here, so let's start with some drums. And then for some reason, it only like yeah. <laughs> So now that starts playing directly. And that happens to be in the tempo 120. If I now pick a bass line, what do you think, Jonas? Yeah, uh, maybe some uh, acoustic, acoustic bass line. Alright, so pick that one. So just add that in. So that will be, then be adjusted to the same tempo. So I can use all the loops together because they're now in 120, right? But you don't have to figure that out yourself, you just play around with it. Then, secondly, there are actually uh, also have a key. So this bass line happens to be an A minor, but I don't have to know that because I can combine it through all the loops because now we have adjusted them all to be in the same key. So we take like a rose here. And that would actually work quite good with that bass line. So a lot of kids and a lot of people that come into the soundtrack, they start playing around with the loops directly because this is a really, really easy way to get going. But then we have hundreds of different instruments. So instead of playing with the loops, I can let add a track here, and I can add a synthesizer. sample instruments so I can actually play with basses I can use roads I can use string sections I can use um, organs and we have we happen to actually get hold of a whole bunch of really high quality 
uh, guitars. So we sample them all, and we have like 70 different uh, high quality guitar sounds here. So I can pick like a uh, big and clean sound. So you can really get the, the, the sound exactly like the guitar. We can take something more heavy. Let's take. types of real instruments that are sampled into the sample as well. So it's both a sampler, so those are samples for running, and it's, uh, it's a synthesizer, as I showed you here before. And that synthesizer could, of course, be tweaked as well. So if you're into synthesizers, you know about rotations and so on, you have all that stuff here as well. And this is all running in the browser, as I said. Uh, on top of that, you have all types of effects. So you can add uh, you can add compressors, you can add choruses, vibrato, stereo delays, or whatever you need. So uh, I'll show you a little bit more about that. So but when, I'm, when I'm playing around here, I can actually then collaborate with people. So let's invite uh, Jonas to my song. So then I just go to the collaboration tab here, and we'll find the user. Restoring your song. Exactly. <laughs> On your cloud server. Yeah. So let's pick Jonas here. Uh, right. Uh, would you like to help? Right? Without the you. Okay. No? Uh, now, actually, Jonas has been invited to the party, and I can see that up here. So we see under this gray button here that we actually are two people now joining the project. And Jonas is just going to go and accept this invitation, and then he will join the project. And now he can actually start creating music in parallel with me in the same project. So we can continue. When he's doing some stuff, we can continue adding some guitar, right? So we haven't just uh, built in a synthesizer and a sampler. We actually built in a complete guitar amplifier and effect uh, stack here as well. So I can pick uh, guitar and bass up. And so I just add my guitar as a normal kind of 3.5 millimeters jack here. <coughs> so that's, that's through our amplifier directly in the browser. If I just increase the volume a little bit. do some lead on top of this, right?
Sync Jonah stuff, and then that will be added to the song as well. So now we got two more tracks here. So Jonah's also added some guitar, but it's MIDI, and also added in the uh, loop, I think. kind of a synchronous collaboration thing. But now we can actually do this in real time as well. So Vanya just went out the door and we can invite her to the project as well. So let's search for Vanya. So now she's got an invitation and as soon as she picks that up, we will see it uh, up here uh, in the collaborator collaborators for the project. Yeah, now she's in. And now we can actually start a video call with her using WebRTC. Hi, Vanya. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. What do you think about you know we're actually making a song here <laughs> oh yeah. that's nice yeah. so would you like to do some vocals on that because uh, both definitely me and Jonas felt a little bit hangover i think yeah. uh, <laughs> party we had here like yes. minutes ago yeah sure so i'm gonna just um add a new vocal track yeah and and I'm going, to mute, I'm going to mute my mic here, mic here because otherwise you get a feedback probably. Yes. Yeah, because we have the speakers on here. Mm -hmm. uh, so now she presses the record at first. Right, so I'm going to listen to the track. Now she's syncing her stuff, and we'll get yet another track with the vocal part. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So, here we are. So now we have a vocal part. She's getting singing good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is a completely uh, dry signal, but then we have all the effects here. So we can actually, I was a little bit worried about it. We added that. 
but you can add like compressor on top of that. So that's play it and see what happens. This night I, I'll be on the highway all night, counting light lights for you. Cause I know I'm in a rush, rush, uh, rush, rush, uh, this night. And we actually also have an auto tune. So now she's singing in tune, but imagine that she wasn't singing in tune. Uh, then we can actually put some auto tune on this. And that, since we're still in A minor, we just pick all the A minor uh, tones here, and we do a quick auto tune on that. Like that. That's how soundtrack works. Thank you very much, Maya. Yes, it's fun to work, right? <laughs> so uh, that was a quick, or quick and quick, it was a demo uh, of, uh, of soundtrack. So as we said, we, we're focusing very much on the education space right now because we are growing heavily in that space and we have a lot of traction from both different types of, of um, industry partners in that area and also from, from a lot of schools. So we're getting in about 100 new schools every week actually signing up for, for trials. And it's, about, and it's uh, mainly in the US, but a lot also in Sweden, of course, because we're here, but it's starting to grow now in the UK and Australia as well. And we've integrated with Google Classroom. I don't know if you know about Google Classroom, but if you have kids, uh, an eight and an 11 year old, uh, and they started to use those kind of what's called learning management systems where they actually could create assignments and handle the groups of, of students in the school. And then they could, we have integrated with that so then they can automatically push all the students directly into the tool and don't have to bother anything about registration or, or something or, or creating assignments directly from soundtrack into Google Classroom. So just to show you a quick uh, video of how we ambition and how Soundtrap is being used in school, because the cool thing is that when they were starting to use it in school, they're not just using it for music. They use it for podcasts, they do documentaries, they do mockumentaries, they do interviews, go home and interviews to parents, they do kind of backgrounds for theater work, they do, there was a girls' school in Australia with seven or seven-year-old girls that were making backgrounds for the puppet shows. <laughs> they, they do it for all types of audio, uh, so it's not just for music actually, it's all types of teachers are using it. They're using it for language pronunciation exercises in French, like, yeah. yeah. So, um, here's how it can work.
So that's everything for me. Thank you very much. So now you're rushing. Yeah, <coughs> can we do a few questions? Yeah, exactly. So if you have any questions, <coughs> the ones that are asking the best questions, they will get a Chromecast. Right? Not, not every question. That's three. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Do you know about smart guitar sensors? Sorry? Do you know about smart guitar sensors connected to the internet? Uh, yeah, there are some smart guitar sensors. Now, um, so if they are MIDI, if they're supporting MIDI, of course, then we could. They're actually from Stockholm. <coughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I, I know them. I know them. They design a new guitar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they've been demonstrating it for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know them. Yeah. Yeah? How about live analytics while you record? Yeah. For example, I, I recorded a podcast two weeks ago and when I actually listened to the result, I should have had, uh, had the lowered volume exactly, uh, yeah. and sit yeah. closer to it. And yeah. That was quite easy to mm. Yeah. So it's, that's, that's a good idea. So we, we, have, a, we have a huge backlog of things. Uh, so uh, yeah, we actually, um, so we we're a development team. How many are we? Like five or six now in the development team? Yeah, we're about five five five. starting Friday. Exactly. I'm, yeah, exactly. Four and a half. Yeah, Friday. yeah. Anyway, so and but we and we have two weeks sprints, and, and we are analyzing our backlog for, for user weeks. requests. For <laughs> 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 yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, what part of the sound processing is done, like on in the client side and or in the service side? The mastering is done on the service side, uh, but all other stuff is made on the client side. The, the auto tune is done on the service side, but otherwise everything is done on the client side. Yeah. Um, so Chrome supports Web Media and uh, Chrome Speaker, but uh, what about the other browsers? And so Safari supports some of it. Internet Explorer doesn't support at all, <laughs> uh, but Edge is really quite good actually. So uh, um, most of the more more than one supports it's good. Uh, we say that we support uh, Safari and Chrome officially, so to speak. Yeah, but I know, I know Safari, uh, as I said, no to the web media. Exactly, so support. some parts, some parts is not supported by web media. But then you have bi uh, some plugins they actually can, can use on Safari to get it going. So, and then, yeah. as well, um, then you support iOS and, uh, and, uh, and yeah. Linux. Yeah, but we don't, so there are some limitations on iOS when it comes to that because they're using Safari. But we actually are going to release an app quite soon as well. It will still be web-based within the app, but they will that will have a little bit more features. Yes. Yes. You. Okay. Uh, what are the limitations with regard to seeing rural areas for bandwidth? I mean, what quality is yeah. internet service? Yeah. So, it, since everything is run on the client, so once you have it on the client, you're not connected to the internet. So we have been on number of, of trade shows actually that we have very bad connections and then we just download the stuff we need and then it runs the <coughs> just when you download areas if you want to use uh, education uh, yeah. Not necessarily yeah yeah no, yeah we're not focusing on those markets right now i should say but, but definitely i see your point yeah uh, so what about the license for the samples and stuff like that yeah so all the uh, all the stuff that are in Soundtrap you can use in whatever way you really like. Either we have such a license, but most of the stuff we have actually uh, recorded ourselves or with so what if people I working. Like want to publish something later? Yeah, you just I publish it. it. Yeah, but of course you add in stuff that you don't own from some other sources, then it's it's up to you. Like in the first video here. Sorry. Like in the first video. The first video, no, that's actually recorded by. Um, I mean, take street position and then record it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they are. We should say that they are actually friends. Uh, so <laughs> so they, they, they study together. I guess that could be an add-on. You can add like, oh, this is the right yeah. song or yeah. that. I, this I don't know if you've heard about the company Audible, which is another Stockholm-based company. They yeah. are trying to solve exactly yeah. like that, and they're good friends with us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Following up on the download yeah. question, like the, to download the full uh, the project. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I think Jonas should uh, answer that. I don't think I heard a question. So when you download it, is it downloaded in full quality and, and how that works when you're on your incubation? Uh, yeah, uh, so we do have uh, like a native client plugin, uh, which is also Google uh, technology. 
where we do uh, AUG encoding on the client side before we upload it uh, to the server. So it's actually a pretty small file that we do upload and download. So everything is, is AUG based. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you already had a question. Yeah. yeah. We don't see that we actually are working within the same market as those tools because as I said, they're focusing on, on professional producers and technicians more. Uh, we are focusing on more on musicians and, and maybe students. Uh, so we see that they have different types of, of, of kind of needs. We do, however, put in uh, more and more features that you used to if you are a pro user. And we also have a lot of pro users that are using us to do collaborations, which they cannot do in many other platforms. Um, so. But I'm, uh, I'm saying we, we're not competing with them, but of course, if users, it's, it's, if enough users are telling us that they want some type of feature that they're using another tool, we'll probably implement it. But we always do it with our touch. So we always do it on very much from a user experience perspective. So we have two persons working right. solely on the user experience. Uh, yeah. There's, there's also a question. Yeah. Yes, we're doing that all the time, actually. Okay. So we are adding both more instruments, uh, sample instruments, and loops all the time. So we have <coughs> like two people working full time for us, not in the team, but only doing that. So we're releasing a full, um, a full orchestra suite now in a couple of weeks. We're just finalizing it now with with all violins and cellos and everything and uh, <coughs> um, horns. Um, and we're also adding a, a, a whole bunch of new loops in a couple of weeks as well. So we, yeah. uh, what about delays for like the guitar service? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean latency or? Yeah, latency. Yeah. <coughs> so it's also depending on, depending on your platform. Uh, the best platform right now, I should say, is Chrome with <coughs> Mac. <laughs> but, uh, so Chrome with Mac, we have the kind of lowest latency right now. Uh, Chrome with Chrome OS is actually second best. <coughs> and then Windows with Edge, Windows 10 with Edge. Uh, so, but we are working with the vendors and we actually are working with Google as well on trying to get the latency as low as possible. When it comes to Mac and Chrome, it's so low so you don't hear the echo yourself. So you can actually use it with, uh, with monitoring. On some platforms, we will turn the monitoring off, but we'll adjust for the latency. So when you record, it seems in sync. And <coughs> yes. Uh, you, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, how how are you working with like uh, um, uh, version or some sort of like history or version control yeah. syncing? Like yeah, we have that. So uh, we have a version control system directly built in. So if I go into a song here. Something I would say it a lot. <coughs> this one. I can go to previous version on that one. Uh, and then I have all the previous versions here, and I can open a new version of that. Yes. That's the render version. Sorry? Yeah. That's just the render version. Not yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's, no, it's the full project. Yeah, it's the full project, but it's, it's the kind of the version you saved on the server, right. right? But then, of course, you can always go back uh, when you're in the project. Uh, oh, you asked so many questions. <laughs> yeah. So you have this sort of community where you can uh, yes. say that you're exactly. So I didn't show you that. So if we go up to the Explore, so this is my profile page. If we go up to the Explore page, then we have the full community of, of like 400,000 people here. Uh, and they are making stuff public, but they're also sending out what we call shouts. Um, so in a the shout, they can write that they would like some help. I would like help <coughs> doing guitar, so I'm a very good guitar player and then you can just reach out to those people. And then we have a full messaging center here where they are then sending messages to each other. Uh, <laughs> you can answer them on email and so on. Yeah. Uh, and actually there are quite nice things popping up here in the, we collaborations from people that have never n known each other before. <coughs> so, so Jacqueline here, uh, or actually I think it was Zach, he was starting to playing at home. Uh, 
on the guitar and then he was reaching out uh, using a shelf like this and saying I need some background vocals on this and Jackie found it and she was starting to sing on his song to go with him and it's, it's quite amazing actually. Dark in your doors It's not what I came here for No, it's not what so I came here for They never met, and they sit in two different places when you ask me. I won't hear you cry when I'm gone I won't know if I'm doing you wrong I never know if I'm doing you wrong Now this is, uh, you have it in this core view here, yeah. Yes? Back there, yeah. Oh, uh, what are your biggest technical constraints besides latency? Sorry, what's your biggest technical constraints besides latency? Oh, good question. Um, I don't know. Do want so I'll probably say performance, because we need to cover a wide range of devices, from small cell phones to 8-core Macintosh computers. And, and hopefully provide the same experience. Uh, so that's a lot of work to put into that to optimize the audio processing uh, while preserving what you uh, hear. Do we have to disable any features on the entire platform? Uh, yes, yes. So maybe you can show the yeah. sound quality. So that's automatically done for you, actually. So when I'm now on a, on a Mac computer, um, uh, everything is switched on automatically but if I'm if I'm opening it up a song let's take uh, take the dubstep song here that Jonas made yeah. right <laughs> uh, <coughs> so we have some demo products here it has the problem with it like before yeah. it doesn't like dubstep <laughs> no, no, not dubstep. Actually, the, the dubstep things are quite cool. So a lot of teachers are using it to get a coolness factor. From the kids. <laughs> so they, 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 they go into history class and they start playing something like this. So, uh, so up here in the settings, uh, you have a settings menu which uh, has says sound quality. This is actually set to medium now for some reason. Maybe I put it to medium before, which means that we actually have already downgraded some of the quality for us. So we removed, in the case of MIDI, we removed some of the stereo effects. Uh, when it's in high quality, it actually sounds better. Then when we go down to low, it will uh, remove, uh, for example, not much of the reverb and anything, which is a very uh, heavy thing to run. And that is automatically checked when you open up on, a, on another device. So if you open it up on a small Android device, it will actually check what's your performance and it will adjust the, the levels for you. Uh, and if, it, if that is not enough, it will actually start freezing tracks as well. So if it cannot run, after a couple of seconds when it sees that it has too much CPU, would actually start freezing the tracks, so all the MIDI tracks will then be frozen into uh, audio tracks like that to increase the performance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, music is a universal language. Do you yes. have any support for uh, other languages like uh, like the screen uh, for the web app? What do you mean by that? Support for uh, French or Spanish or. Yeah, not, not right now. No, it's only English right now, but of course we are going to internationalize Asia when we're going into those markets. Okay. We Right now it's more like we don't, we cannot handle support in China, uh, <laughs> so we don't translate it into Chinese, but of course we do that. Yes? Uh, do you support uh, Korean on, on things like that? Uh, no. Not right now. Uh, we don't support any uh, any plugins just for that reason that we don't want it to be something you need to have on your computer. But we might, in the future, maybe create some type of a plugin system ourselves. Yeah. 
you consider that in some kind of marketplace to have a to uh, I don't know, sell uh, instruments or something? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, how about, like, we, we talked about um, the recording, like, the compression, it happens only for, for the playback, but not for the recording, right? Or is it losslessly compressed? Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Someone want to answer? Well, so everything is actually compressed uh, with the AUG, as Jonas said, but it's at 300 kps, so it's, you know, CD quality. Yeah. Because uh, that kind of directs me to my second question, so yeah. if there's some uh, possibility to download the data, so yeah. I just imagine you change the pricing model yeah. and I won't like it anymore and I need my data. You can, ex <laughs> exactly, you can, export, uh, uh, you can export this track to audio, uh, so you can bounce up all the tracks if you want, yes. Yeah. I was going to ask about music notation. Do you have any plans to do oh. that? <laughs> yeah. I'm really impressed with all the stuff that you've done in this short time. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, do you use any client libraries or, like, for all the effects and the sound processing and all that stuff? No. You implemented <laughs> They implemented all that stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. So, of course, we're using web audio in the. And, and uh, Altar is also tuned, of course, on ours. But mm -hmm. That is Python, but all, all the rest is somewhere else, yeah. So yeah, I have a very technical question. Is the, the processing on the client side, I'm assuming it's very CPU intensive. Mm -hmm. Are you doing any, uh, using any of the hardware acceleration features in the browsers, like WebGL and stuff? Mm -hmm. So WebGL, uh, I don't know if we do too much uh, graphic stuff, and we don't do any audio processing on the GPU, if that's what you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's actually possible from the HTML5 that's perspective. Tough. <laughs> uh, that's tough. Uh, <laughs> but, but I know that the, the, the web audio um, implementation uh, uses multiple uh, cores, if, if available, when they're calculating the reverbs. Um, uh. Yeah. We are, we, are, we are we are thinking about like Siri for soundtrack, so to speak. Um, <laughs> but n no, we haven't implemented yet. But of course, it's on our minds as well. Yeah, good idea. In the back. Uh, what Google Cloud technology specifically are you using? Yeah, maybe. I'll look yeah. up. We're, we're using Google Compute instances to run everything, and Google Cloud Storage for basic all storage needs. Yeah. And that's that's the main bulk of it. Yeah. And how much does it actually cost? <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it's it's a freemium model for consumers, so it's uh, it's it costs you nothing to uh, work with it, up to five songs, and then you get uh, so and you get a thirty days trial of the premium when you start. So you get everything for thirty days, and it's free up to five songs, and then you get a limited set. After the thirty days, you get a limited set of of. Uh, uh, loops to work with and sounds to work with. You don't get the time restore machine that with version handling and everything. So there's a couple of features that are kind of closed down after that period. Then after that, we have a pro and a premium package. So the premium package, which is the best one, costs you $7.99 per month if you pay it annually. Basically, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, collaboration and royalties. Uh, yeah. Is it like said? Nothing, uh, no royalties to just play and have fun, or is it implemented inside Audley? No, no, we haven't implemented, but we are actually, Nicholas who runs Audley and we and me, we went to the same school in our group. Um, <laughs> so we know each other, um, but we, we haven't implemented anything with Audley. I don't think they're really yet re ready yet to actually implement. Uh, they are soon ready, I think. Do you see a need because people start fighting yep. over something? No, 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 they don't. Many people that are at SoundCloud, they're not that for making professional music they're going to sell anyway. They, they're for having fun, right? Yeah. But but it's it, it's the old traditional way. You take up a napkin, right? Like, so how much do you yeah, Then if Kanye you West comes and I want this, I want yeah. this. So they don't have to, not many people are making it public anyway. Okay. So they keep it in the private space and community, and then yeah. they need to. But of course, we, we do understand the problem, and but we haven't solved it yet. 
Yes. Do you use machine learning to improve the performance? So, sorry, sorry. <coughs> do you use machine learning to improve the performance? No. Uh, not directly, no. No. Uh, uh -huh. Normally, how many number of tracks we can add for one cell? Sorry, how many? Number of tracks we can add for one cell? If uh, it's, it depends on your machine, I would say. Uh, but you can have quite many. Um, so let's see if I have the track with me. About voice the track needed. So, so different tracks are different, uh, different performance, uh, require different performance. Uh, MIDI is kind of MIDI together with samples, with effects on it, probably the, the ones that take much from the CPU. Uh, I don't have a, a track in mind here, but well, maybe this one. Let's have a couple of tracks, see if I can open that one. Uh, anyway, so about 20, 25 at least on a, on a, on the laptop, I would say. Uh, but then after that, it starts freezing. So actually, when it freezes all of them, then you can have like maybe 20 more. But on an Android, then then you cannot. Do you any kind of real time collaboration with this It depends on on your um, so this this is a track with like fifteen or something that was quite good. You have both maybe tracks and right. So uh, it depends on your internet speed I would say. So it's not real time in the sense that you can actually practice or have a concert together. But you, if I if I change the volume of tracks, will that be synced? Real time, uh, it's not synced in real time, it's synced when you want to sync it, because yeah. sometimes you would like to do a batch. Yeah. Uh, we have, we are actually ourselves thinking about whether we should do a real time syncing or not. We've chosen this model because the people are kind of recording something and then they would like to share it, so we use that model. But of course it's perfectly fine to sync directly if you like as well. But not of, maybe not every keystroke, because that would be a little bit noisy, I think. Yeah. Uh, you said you were using Dark, what do you use? What do you use for uh, building uh, You mean like uh, any library or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. none, actually. No. So Angular, but that's not. Yeah, Angular, but that's on the community side, so that's, yeah. a, and that's JavaScript. Yeah, so that's uh, like you made it yourself there. Yeah. yeah, so no Polymer or something like that. Yeah. So you're saying about adding instruments with like symphonies. Yeah. Can you bounce part of tracks and put them back in and grow and grow and grow? Yeah. So since you're a big 64 background, mm -hmm. you have some kind of SID chip. Uh, <laughs> some kind of what? SID chip, so you, like an instrument where you can like emulate this synthesizer there. <laughs> uh, no, we have no, no, So that's something, maybe. <laughs> but you do have the same uh, attack. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have very similar. You have yeah. very similar envelopes, yeah. so, so you could get pretty close. Pretty close. Try to find the key, you mean, automatically, or? No, like, um, like <coughs> I have five different plucking instruments. Okay? Yeah. So when I, when I try to record it, I mean, yeah. I, I think can, I can uh, distinguish between the tones and the pitch. Yeah. You know, the, even the kind of sound of it. But if I use this, in, if I record it here, yeah. can, I, can I give me the same uh, differentiation between the instruments? Or it's going to be a flop altogether. Can you repeat the question? I, I'm not 100% sure I understand yeah, the, the question. Can uh, you repeat the question? No, uh, yes, I'm trying to understand it first. But, but so we're saying you have a loop, which we, we have a couple of instruments in it yeah, already. On the, on the same thing, like, like say, um, guitar is a plucking instrument. Yeah. Guitar is a plucking instrument. Yeah. Piano is a plucking instrument. Yeah. So if I have these three loops, but they are on different scales. Okay. Like, so then if I put it on this loop. Yeah. So then I, uh, if I use this synth, it gives this electronic feedback or whatever, right? So yeah. if I play for example N, yeah. uh, will it give me the, can it, will it differentiate between these instruments? Or is it going to? No. No, I'm not 100% still. Uh, maybe you can show me later, but, but, but no, it won't. No. 
right? Um, some more questions, yeah. Because North Sweden, like, there's a group based on this connectivity, and then a couple of North of Sweden? Yes. Great. Facebook has their server installed. <laughs> 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 As an example, is not this connectivity? Can I share something Wi-Fi hotspot with my friends and synchronize together or something? No. But North Sweden has it. My wife, my wife is from Boden, I know. Yeah. Okay? How do you go about when you start a project? You said 120 BPM. Yeah. Do you change that easily yes. and change the key? Yes. All your samples? Yes. Or are they like time stretch? No, yes, they are. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yes. if we uh, add, for example, here, uh, let's add um, a guitar loop. So um, let's take some okay, plugins. Yeah, uh, it's not just that. I'll show you here. So let, let's take a guitar loop in C. loop in G. Actually, we should leave that off. Okay, it's all good. Everything. And then we take a third one in A minor here, right? So this will now sound like this. change the keys, it will not just time stretch it, it will actually change the loops so they sound good as you would play it on a guitar. So if I change this to a G major instead, instead of just playing instead of just playing a C time stretch to G, it will pick the G sample guitar instead. So now it's the G here instead. And then instead of the C it will pick like an F. just time stretching we do time stretching as well but when it comes to the instruments that we know the chords we actually make something a little bit more so if you want to kick the, the, um, the tempo down yeah for us. exactly so let's take tempo 90 instead and we'll just add <coughs> so you can sing it in one tempo and then you when you want to sing it you just feel that it's a little bit too slow change the whole steel, steel guitar loop to another loop which is played how you play steel guitar in C instead of G So the MIDI part. So let's pick not, up. Not the MIDI, but audio. Audio. So we we uh, we don't have an audio editor yet. That's on our backlog. So, uh, but we do have a, a full MIDI editor. So we quantizing and everything. So if I pick up the MIDI track that that he was playing right here, then you have a full. Uh, That 
time stretching and refitching on your own audio. Yeah. That, that works. Yeah, definitely. And auto-tune. Yeah. 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 Okay, so many good questions. Um, I think the business questions already was good. So thank you. Uh, and then we had kind of a prize for a lot of questions. Uh, so the gentleman over here. And then we'll say, I think your question was very really good, even if I don't understand it. So that probably wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Exactly. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, it gets better every time. Yes. Uh, so uh, please feel free to stick around. Uh, we're going to be out in the, the restaurant. Uh, I have a new name for it every time. Uh, let's call it the restaurant for today. Uh, and then we'll have drinks and, and snacks and all that. Uh, and if you need to leave, you just keep on going straight through the courtyard and keep on going to find a place where you